history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. Well, we start this midday with three breaking news stories. First up, stock markets all over the world taking a major dive as fears of the coronavirus spread. The Dow plunged nearly 1,000 points. Look at it right now this morning as the cases surge in South Korea and Italy. Here's a live look at the big board at this hour. A growing number of companies are warning that the coronavirus will prevent them from meeting sales or profit targets for the first three months of this year. Also, reduced demand for goods and services and factory closures in China also expected to deal a strong blow to the global economy. Now, this is all coming as Japan and Germany teeter on the brink of a recession. Coming up in about 12 minutes, the very latest on the virus outbreak as it's impacting people across the world. NBC's Molly Hunter has a report from Milan. We will hear from her coming up at 11.15. Also breaking right now, the Supreme Court just announced it will not take up an appeal from death row inmate Rodney Reed. He's challenging his sentence on the belief that Texas relied on evidence that was later proven to be scientifically invalid. Reed was sentenced to death more than 20 years ago for the assault, rape, and strangling of 19-year-old Stacy Stites. His death sentence is on hold right now due to separate state proceedings. And jurors have found disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein guilty. You heard that verdict just moments ago during a special report from NBC News right here on Channel 2. Weinstein was found guilty of rape and criminal sexual act. He was found not guilty of the most serious charges in the case, two counts of predatory sexual assault. He was also acquitted in court in Manhattan of first-degree rape. Once again, Harvey Weinstein found guilty in his sexual assault trial. Now jurors will have to decide his punishment. Now back to our other big story this morning, the rainy, sloppy mess for the morning commute. Live look outside right now at the Southwest Freeway. Meteorologist Britta Morin is here, but Britta, things are changing for the yes. lunchtime. It already yes. looks a little better. Nice to have the sloppy mess behind us, right? But we still have a few spots that are working their way through it. It's not going to be until this afternoon that we are completely in the clear for all of us in Southeast Texas. But the Southwest side, looking pretty good. It was an awful morning. Right now on the Southwest Freeway, you might still have damp roads, but the rain has moved off. Here's a look at Exact Track radar. It's still out there moving through our coastal counties. It's going to take at least an hour and a half to two hours for this to completely move out. And we have a little bit of thunder and lightning mixing in. So if you hear that rumble of thunder, make sure that you're taking that extra caution and keeping yourself safe. This is not severe weather, but very inconvenient. We're drenched along 288, also the Gulf Freeway. And look how steady and heavy it is just north of Angleton. So if you are leaving Angleton and heading up on 288, I suggest just holding off by about 40 minutes and you'll have an easier go. If you do choose to head out, you just need to make sure that you're slowing down your speeds because this is some steady rain that you're going to be driving through and you'll see it along Highway 6 and also the Gulf Freeway. So coming in from Lamar in Texas City, definitely a tough go of things. Over the entire morning, this is what we've stacked up. In the blue, about a half inch to an inch of rainfall, but we did see a few pockets on the south side moving into Fort Bend County where we stacked up a good one to two inches of rain, so very inconvenient. Uh, temperatures have not really changed too much behind that front. It was a cold front, but no cold out air with it. We're at 70 degrees, and we're going to top off in the mid to upper 70s. There's a chance that we could see a break of sunshine. Christine, that would easily get 
at our uh, temperatures into the upper 70s. We do have cold air on the way. I'll let you know when it's going to arrive coming up. All right, Britta, thank you. And remember, you at home can track the forecast whenever you want. Just download Frank's free forecast weather app. It's a great resource. Search KPRC in your app store. Seven people are injured after a man discharges his weapon at a flea market. It's a story we've been following since last night. Now investigators have arrested a man who is now facing charges in this case. Channel 2's Taisha Walker joining us live with what she's learning after that man's first court appearance. Taisha. Christine, the man whose gun went off at this flea market last night when it was crowded full of families has been charged this morning. We just got the mugshot of the 25 year old suspect into our newsroom a short time ago. You can see a picture of Jose Manuel Guerrero Reyes. He has been charged with aggravated assault. Reyes was taken into custody last night after his gun went off here at the Mercado Sabado Domingo. Hundreds of families were gathered at this airline drive flea market for a dance. Partygoers say they recall hearing a single gunshot. Harris County deputies say the 30, a 30 year old man was shot in the thigh. This morning we're told that he's in good condition expected to make a full recovery. Six other people between the ages of 26 and 43 years old were injured by the bullets fragments when it ricocheted. Reyes told deputies that the shooting was not intentional. The defendant stated he was intoxicated and that he accidentally fired his weapon when he was retrieving his hand from his right front pocket and that he had forgot he had cocked the trigger. He thought, uh, when asked what he thought happened to those people that got shot, the defendant advised when he shot his gun, his bullet ricocheted off the ground and hit the people. All seven people that were injured last night were told that they are expected to make a full recovery, that they had non-life-threatening injuries. We also know that Reyes is sitting in jail this morning on a $40,000 bond. We're putting live in North Harris County, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Taisha, thank you. A violent home invasion. Thieves kick in the door and force their way inside. This happened this morning at a home on Heather Brook and Fleetwell Drive in Southwest Houston. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli is joining us live this morning. And Vince, the masked men opened fire inside the home and sounds like somebody was hurt. Christine, that's right. Just a terrifying situation for this family. Two men broke down their door, fired shots and robbed them. This morning, the family says they're thankful to be alive. Shattered glass outside the home, two robbers violated. Detectives say around 7 o'clock this morning, two men wearing camouflage and masks kicked in the door, then forced their way inside a family's home. An 86-year-old grandmother, 70-year-old father, 42-year-old woman, and 20-year-old man live here. The suspects held the 20-year-old at gunpoint and made him get on the floor. Then one gunman pulled the trigger, a bullet was fired and ricocheted off the ground, then bullet fragments struck the 20-year-old in his hand. The crooks ransacked the place, stealing phones and other electronics before getting away. And right now, the injured man is receiving treatment at the hospital. He is expected to be okay. Again, authorities are searching for two suspects in camouflage. If you know anything, please contact Houston Police. Reporting live in Southwest Houston, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. A sad day in the history of space. One of NASA mathematicians who was depicted in the movie Hidden Figures has died. Katherine Johnson was 101 years old. NASA Administrator Jim Breitenstein wrote on Twitter that she was, quote, an American hero and her pioneering legacy will never be forgotten. Johnson was portrayed by Taraji P. Henson in the 2016 Oscar-nominated film. It is a special and an important day in Los Angeles as thousands of fans will come together to remember NBA great Kobe John Bryant and his daughter Gigi. A celebration of life is about to get underway inside of the Staples Center. Jay Gray reports from the place where Kobe called home for so many years. Murals and merchandise line the streets of Los Angeles, a city still mourning. I couldn't believe it. I still can't wrap my head around it. The loss of a hero. His hustle, his heart, his drive, his passion to the game. The passion for Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gigi, and seven others lost last month. We, we have lost a family member. Was clear from the moment their chopper went down. Officials saying 250,000 or more gathered outside the arena where the All-Star had played. Later this morning, 20,000 will be inside. It's just a beautiful thing to get that many people that would otherwise never be united united 
The date of this celebration of life is no coincidence. Chosen by his wife, Vanessa, it represents Gigi and Kobe's jersey numbers and the number of years Brian spent as a Laker and with his wife. While for fans, the event is a chance to say one last goodbye. After everyone gets that closure in L.A., I think it'll be more happiness in, in L.A. for him and his daughter. And seven of their friends taken way too soon. Another nod to the jersey numbers of Gigi and Kobe Bryant. The cost of tickets to this morning's memorial ranging from $24.02 to $224. Proceeds from the event will benefit Bryant's Mamba and Mambasita Youth Sports Foundation. Jay Gray, NBC News, Los Angeles. A five-year-old girl shot inside of an apartment this morning, and now police are searching for her teenage brother. This all happened at an apartment complex on West 34th Street near Mangum overnight. Investigators say that little girl's mother woke in the middle of the night after hearing a gunshot. When she went into her living room, she says she found her daughter injured and her 14-year-old son panicked. Police say that teen then picked up the gun and took off. That girl was rushed to the hospital where she is expected to survive. Houston police are asking for your help to find a man accused of sexually abusing two children. Rafael Salazar Jr., who you see right here, is charged with continuous sexual assault of a child as well as indecency with a child. He was last seen in the southeast Houston area, so if you do see him, Call police. It is officially the last day for the so-called Leaning Tower of Dallas. The partially demolished building has attracted hundreds of people at the makeshift park snapping selfies and posing for photos. A crane and a wrecking ball was brought in to knock down what's left of that standing structure. It was supposed to have been imploded completely back on February 16th to make way for a new 27-acre mixed-use development. Two people killed during Mardi Gras festivities. Coming up, we're going to hear from the family of a man who died after he was struck by a float, how their mourning has lost. Plus, the coronavirus crisis, what we're learning about new cases that are rising as the fears continue to grow. The world has reached a tipping point in the fight against the coronavirus. This is all according to experts who say that the outbreak is on the verge of a global pandemic. A large cluster of cases in northern Italy has led to a lockdown of several towns there. NBC's Molly Hunter reports now from Milan. Italy is a nation on high alert. 50,000 people in the north told to stay at home, creating virtual ghost towns. 5,000 miles from the epicenter in China, Italy has the fifth most cases in the world. The sudden spike leading Italy's prime minister to take what he calls dramatic measures. <laughs> Trains now being inspected at the border with Austria. The Venice carnival cut short. And a stark image for the end of Milan's fashion week. Here, Giorgio Armani holding his runway show in an empty theater Meanwhile, South Korea has now raised its coronavirus alert to the highest level. Its president saying the country faces a grave turning point with seven dead and nearly 800 confirmed cases. And aboard the ill-fated Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan, a third passenger has now died, an 80-year-old Japanese man. 14 Americans who tested positive for coronavirus were allowed to return back to the U.S. from the Diamond Princess last week. Fears of the virus spreading have sparked a backlash from some states receiving evacuees. The city of Costa Mesa in California filing a temporary restraining order against setting up a quarantine site at a state hospital there. We're a compassionate community, but we are not going to continue to be the place where everybody drops off their crises. Here in Milan, not a lot of people are wearing face masks. When we landed in the airport, no one took my temperature. No one asked about my travel uh, history in the last 14, 24 days. But that is, of course, the big fear is that this outbreak in Italy could spread beyond the borders. Molly Hunter, NBC News, Milan, Italy. Caught on camera, a Florida man pulls an unconscious driver from her car after she drove into a canal. Sean Turner says when he saw the white SUV taken on water, he knew he had to help. That is when he jumped into the canal, crawled into the car through an open window, unbuckled the woman's seatbelt, and then managed to get her out of that vehicle. Turner says he really couldn't have done this all on his own. It was a team effort, and we got her to the side and waited for paramedics to come. Once we knew she was breathing, it took a little bit more time. After getting the woman out of the car, they were able to call 911. She was then rushed to the hospital. 
Tragedy striking two New Orleans twice since the Mardi Gras festivities began. Two people dead in separate tandem float accidents. On Saturday night, 58-year-old Joseph Sampson was hit and killed by a float. Then on Wednesday, a different float hit and killed another woman. Officials have banned tandem floats for the rest of the 2020 Mardi Gras season. We have to do our due diligence in making sure that this is a safe carnival uh, for everyone. And in doing so, I think we have to do a, a, our job in evaluating the safety measures that could be put into place moving forward. And despite the week's tragedies, Mardi Gras' biggest celebrations will go on as scheduled. Supporters of Julian Assange protesting outside of a London court today as his extradition hearing began. They chanted, free Julian Assange and no extradition outside of the court where Assange's extradition hearing was taking place. The chanting was so loud at times that the judge asked Assange's counsel to tell his supporters that they are harming his case. The WikiLeaks founder is set to argue that the spying charges against him are political motivated. Vandals hit Michael Bloomberg's Chicago area campaign office overnight. Authorities were called in just after one o'clock this morning after derogatory words were spray painted right on the front of that building. You can see them. Several words including racist and sexist were scrawled across four windows right in the front of that campaign office. As of right now, police say they have no suspects in this case. All right, turning now to our forecast. It's kind of a gloomy start to the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. And this morning, just a really rough go, getting everyone out the door to work yeah. and school. The good news is the worst is behind us, and we're going to see dry conditions this afternoon. Wonderful. Yes, we just have a little more to get through, at least at the coast. So it's all about location. Here in Houston, we're dry. We're done with the rain. But our coastal county is dealing with what went through Houston for the morning rush, and it's a really slow go. So if you're joining us from Galveston County, you probably hear those rubbles of thunder, seeing some downpours outside your window. You have at least an hour to get through, and then we're going to see some improvements. But that's a look at exact track radar. Uh, leaving up the Gulf Freeway, driving into Harris County, it is going to be a really slow go. Once you get into Houston, you'll see some leftover damp roads, but at least the rain is out of here. If you prefer not to drive through the downpours, just wait for about an hour, hour and a half. All this is pushing out to the southeast. It's going to be out of here before you know it. Uh, let's take you into Galveston County. Thunder and lightning across the area, so take that extra caution. Not severe weather by any means, but a quick inch of rainfall possible, and that's going to cause some really tricky driving conditions. Uh, right now over Angleton, heaviest rain is moving through, and then it will break out into some lighter rain showers, so in the next 15 minutes, you'll see some easier conditions up 288 if you do want to get a move on it. Meanwhile, there's a tighter look at Galveston County, Santa Fe, thunder and lightning for you, so take extra caution along Highway 6. Rainfall total-wise this morning, about a half inch to an inch of rainfall, so again, these were nuisance showers that were very inconvenient, but a few spots on the south side of Harris County and of Fort Bend County, about one to two inches of rain. So definitely some downpours trying to mix their way through. Meanwhile, this is what we're left with, a little bit of overcast skies. But as we go into the afternoon, we could see breaks of sunshine. I do still expect mostly cloudy skies for the remainder of today. 70 degrees right now here in Houston. Yes, we had a cold front just roll through, but no cold air behind it. Uh, we're going to be in the mid to upper 70s today. If you see a break of sunshine, you will quickly hit 78 degrees. We're waiting for that strong north wind to kick in to filter in that cold air and that's not going to happen until tomorrow night. So there's a look at that cold front stretches all the way up to the northeast. Behind it we have a second cold front that is going to be moving through tomorrow and it's going to be moving through without any rainfall. So let's time things out hour by hour. 3 p.m. starting to dry out at the coast looking pretty good. There's a look at those patches of clear skies. Again it's going to be a warm afternoon. Then we go into tomorrow's forecast and we start to filter in that cooler air behind this cold front. Cold front rolls through, but the cold air is lagging behind that cold front. So notice on Tuesday afternoon, we're still in the upper 60s, low 70s, comfortable. The cold air moves in Tuesday night, and by Wednesday morning, we're waking up in the 40s. Wednesday afternoon, struggling to get into the low 50s. So we're going from spring for the first two days of the work week all the way right back down to winter. So here's a full look at that 10-day forecast, 74 degrees for today. Uh, nice and mild and pretty quiet for tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, that cold air arrives, and you're really going to notice it. 54 degrees on Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be a cold entrance for our trail riders. 32 <laughs> degrees on Thursday. I say that because tonight is going to be joining them this year. But you know what? You don't have rain. That's Most good. Most of the yes. time we have cold and wet conditions for the trail ride. This year we just have cold. So I'm going to be out I there with layers and wet. layers on. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Just layer up. You'll be fine. There we go. I'm excited. Yeah. They make very hearty breakfast, so you're going to be good to go. Oh, well, I'm ready for that. <laughs> All right. Awesome, Britta. Thank you. We're looking forward to that, too. All right. Krispy Kreme has the answer for your donut cravings at home. Coming up, what they're launching this week. 
Cowboys and cowgirls, it's time to suit up. The Houston Rodeo's coming to town. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis. Coming up, where you can find Western wear for the whole family without spending your whole paycheck. Welcome back. Some really scary moments this weekend for pop star Megan Trainer when her father was injured after he was hit in a hit and run accident. According to investigators, Gary Trainer was hit while he was trying to cross a busy intersection in LA on Friday. On Instagram, Trainer posted, quote, I'm with my dad now. Thank you for all of your sweet messages. It was very scary, but he is the strongest man I know. Jesse Smollett is heading back to court today. The former Empire actor is facing new charges. Earlier this month, he was indicted by a grand jury for making false reports. A little over a year ago, Jesse Smollett told police that he was attacked by two men because he is black and openly gay. However, authorities later say they determined that the whole story was fake. Smollett has denied and still denies that he lied about the incident. In consumer news this midday, Macy's continuing to feel the pinch of online shopping. The company closed its store in Seattle over the weekend. This is all part of its plan to close 125 of its least productive stores. The store closure represents about one-fifth of Macy's current total. Macy's has not said how many jobs would be lost, though. It's also closing company headquarters in Cincinnati and San Francisco. Keep it classy, Houston. Hey, tonight is kind of a big deal, right? If you ever dreamed of being a news anchor, Ron Burgundy style, now you can. Anchorman the game made yes. its debut at the New York Toy Fair this weekend. The improper teleprompter is an adult party <laughs> game from Barry and Jason Games and Entertainment based on the Will Ferrell comedy hit movie. And yes, in case you're wondering, us news anchors, we actually do quote him often. Yes. Off camera. Very Play often. <laughs> Players compete by sabotaging other anchors, news stories with ridiculous magnetic words and phrases to try and get them to laugh while reading the news. Oh my That's gosh. That's dangerous. That would be very dangerous. <laughs> this too, Krispy Kreme going to start delivering nationwide on Leap Day, February 29th. This could be dangerous because you'll be wanting to eat them all the time. The chain's going to deliver those donuts by the dozens, as well as box coffee via DoorDash with a $4.99 delivery fee. You can order through Krispy Kreme's website or its app. There is one catch to this, though. You have to be within 10 miles of a Krispy Kreme location. That is dangerous as well. All right, <laughs> you can get yourself ready for a rodeo without breaking your budget. That is right. Coming up, consumer expert Amy Davis has some advice straight ahead. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Women should drink less than five ounces of wine or 12 ounces of beer a day to be considered within their limits. But doctors say women are overdoing it without realizing it's leading to major health problems. Details are coming up. RS.com. Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. That breaking news, stock markets all over the world taking a major dive as fears of the coronavirus continue to spread. The Dow plunged nearly a thousand points at opening this morning as cases surge in South Korea as well as Italy. This is a live look right now at the board this hour. A growing number of companies are warning that the coronavirus will pre prevent them from meeting sales or profit targets for the first three months of the year. Also, reducing demand for goods and services and factory closures in China are also expected to deal a strong blow to the global economy. All right, well, a wet start to our Monday here in Houston. Live look outside, courtesy of Houston Transtar. You can see the roads a little wet still, but uh, not as bad as they were this yeah, morning. So, out. Thanks for joining us on this midday. I'm Tanaya Wright. Yeah, and I'm Christina. Well, we want to get right over to meteorologist Britta Merwin for a look at our forecast. And we're hoping some changes are headed our way. It's a little muggy yeah, out there. Just be careful when you ask for change. You never know where you're yeah, going to get here. It's and, coming. Yes, yeah, so you can always count on change. We are looking at a dry afternoon, but we're still working through some rain at the coast. It's what we went through here in Houston. Right now here in Houston, not looking bad. Yes, we have the overcast skies, but the rain is moving out. We're starting to dry out. It was a cold front that rolled through, and we are still in the upper 60s. We will be pushing the upper 70s this afternoon. The cold air is on the way, but it's not going to move through for the next few days. Meanwhile, the coast, it is still a mess. We have thunder and lightning over Highway 6 in the Gulf Freeway. If you are just, you know, trying to get out the door in our coastal counties, I would hold off for about an hour because this is moving out and then we're dry for the rest of the day. So if you just don't want to deal with the downpours, it's easier to get across town. You only have to wait about an hour and then we're good to go. Currently, Santa Fe, thunder and lightning, some heavy rainfall. I am seeing it clear out in 
and Liverpool and also Alvin. You have about 20 minutes to go and then you're good to go. We picked up about a half inch to an inch of rainfall, but the pockets of green, that's a quick one to two inches of rain. So we did have some hefty downpours with that front moving through. Meanwhile, that is a live look from our tower camera starting to clear things up on the Southwest Freeway. We're looking for highs in the mid to upper 70s. It just depends on if you see a break of sunshine. If that sun comes out, you will quickly warm up. So when is the cold air arriving? I told you it's on the way. We'll time it out coming up next. Christine? All right, Britta, thank you. And remember, for folks at home, you can track the forecast really whenever you want. Just download Frank's free forecast weather app. You can find it by searching KPRC <coughs> in your mobile app store. And here is a look at some of the morning's other big stories. Police are still searching for a teen boy after his five-year-old sister was shot inside of an apartment. They responded to West 34th Street right near Mangum overnight. Investigators say that girl's mother woke up in the middle of the night after hearing a gunshot. She found her daughter injured in the living room and her 14-year-old son panicked. Police say the teen then picked up that gun and took off. We're told the girl is expected to survive. We now know the name of the man deputies arrested after a shooting that injured seven people in North Harris County. Investigators say 25-year-old Jose Manuel Guerrero Reyes said the gun that he was carrying accidentally went off inside of a crowded dance hall. This happened at the Mercado Saba Domingo on Airline Drive last night. He is now charged with aggravated assault. Guerrero Reyes was just appeared in court just a few minutes ago. A judge has set his bond at $40,000. Now to the very latest on the final farewell to Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and these seven other people who were killed in a helicopter crash. We are now just moments away from the start of the Celebration of Life ceremony at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, where Kobe Bryant played for the Lakers. Today's date was picked to honor the number 24 jersey that Bryant wore in the latter part of his career and the number two jersey that his daughter Gianna wore in youth basketball. I couldn't believe it. I still can't wrap my head around it. His hustle, his heart, his drive, his passion to the game. We ask for people who are not part of this event, that they've not been able to acquire a ticket, to honor the family's wishes and to allow this event to go in, in as smooth a process as possible. Kobe and his daughter were laid to rest during a private memorial service earlier this month. And the world is also remembering restaurateur model and author B. Smith. She died over the weekend after a battle with Alzheimer's. In addition to building restaurants and a home decor collection over the years, Smith was a fashion model, actress, TV host, and best-selling cookbook author. In 1976, she became one of the first African-American women to appear on the cover of Mademoiselle magazine. Smith was 70 years old. Go Texan Day is this Friday and Rhoda Houston starts on March 3rd. It is time to dig through your closet or you might need to go shopping. You want buckles, boots, all the bling, but you don't want to spend big bucks, right? No, I need it at all. Our consumer expert Amy Davis shows us how to get rodeo ready on a budget. This ain't just any rodeo. It's our anchor Tania Wright's first rodeo. So I took her shopping to get her all gussied up. <laughs> on over to just about any resale shop in Houston and you'll find the Western wear right up front this time of year. Hand-me-downs on the Southwest Freeway near Wesley and has been selling upscale ladies clothing for 40 years. We found plaid, leather, suede, and blue jeans, but manager Joanne Lank says it doesn't take much to go Western. It's as simple as wearing a pair of jeans, white t-shirt, 99 cent bandana, you're all set for the rodeo. I like this, but I need a tank top to try it on. Tania found a tunic with fringe. Paired with her boots, it says sassy cowgirl at a price that says yeehaw. Oh, nice. Everything in hand-me-downs is $9.99 and up. And some items like this suede fringe tank still have tags. This was originally $295 at Neiman Marcus. Now it's $45. No time to dawdle. Our next stop is a new U boutique on Spring Cypress near Highway 249. You don't have to go to where it's Porter Wagner type of rodeo. Owner Cheryl Copperweed is genius at pulling outfits together. And since she's a lifetime Rodeo Houston committee member, she has a lot of Western wear inventory from fellow rodeo members and volunteers. The bell-bottom pants that are really in and leopard. She gave Tania several options and let her pick her favorite, reminding her that with the right accessories, anything can be rodeo chic. You can take your basic and throw on a belt. You can throw on a necklace without a belt and put on a hat and a pair of boots and make it look Western. And when you're stacking so many accessories, you don't want to pay full price. This belt is $16. These cute turquoise rings retail 20 bucks. Here, they're five. A leopard belt turns Tanaya into a rodeo queen in this black dress. Black and brown and leopard. 
I love it. Now I want to add a hat and see what she looks like in a hat. It's my first cowboy hat. Yeah, she looks so really... sissy. I love you, sissy. But Deborah Winger's got nothing on Tania's new duds. This dress, 40 bucks. The belt is 24, and the hat is 71. Grand total, $135. Nice, not bad. You can definitely go cheaper. You can get a less expensive hat. On Click to Houston, we have the list of the best resale shops and places to find Western wear for kids and grown-ups right now. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Look, Sissy. I know. Look, Sissy, did you have fun? So fashionable now. Yeah, I love it. Ready All for right. rodeo. Ready for us, right around the corner. All right, legendary actor Harrison Ford is giving away his secret to a successful marriage. Coming up, what he says is working for him. And coming up next, a movement behind a message we talk with one Houstonian who is spreading his message of nonviolence throughout the world. But first, a live look at Wall Street. Right now, there is just so much violence in the world, even right here in our city. So the question is, what can be done to curb it? One man has made it his mission to find an answer. Mendar Opte has created Cities for Peace, which is an initiative to spread a message of nonviolence with values and beliefs deep rooted in his heritage. He joins us now live to talk all about this. So first up, thank you for joining us. And uh, this is just an amazing thing. You've been working on this project for several years. Can you tell us about it? So, you know, four years ago, uh, I had this uh, key moment of truth where I realized that uh, violence happens anywhere, anytime. And today, it doesn't see skin color, it doesn't see your bank balance, it doesn't see which zip code you live in. And when these acts of violence happens, whether it's a suicide or all the way to global terrorism, then we come and pour our compassion and we put flowers and candles. Mm -hmm. So that key moment of truth was, it can happen to me anytime. And only when it happens to me, will I do something about it. Otherwise, we have become so immune to the stories of violence that was, we move on. I was gonna say, we hear them so often, so they kind of, until it affects you personally, it just kind of becomes background noise. And yeah. you even went to uh, South Central Los Angeles and did some work there. How was that experience? Yeah, my documentary film, so I, just, uh, pro I produced a documentary mm -hmm. film called From India With Love. And the film was premiered by the Los Angeles Police Department. And it brought together over 400 people from the city of Los Angeles. The premise of the film is a historic trip that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. made to study Gandhi's teachings when he had gone to India. That not many people know about. Mm -hmm. So in my documentary film, I brought the parents from the Sandy Hook School, a gang member from Los Angeles and the activists for Black Lives. Uh, to follow Martin Luther King Jr.'s footsteps in India. Uh, so it was a surreal, it was a very profound experience for all of us. And the Los Angeles police chief said he would love to send all of LA to India, uh, but that's not practical, so can you bring India to LA? So that's the work that uh, you know we started doing in South Central. It's uh, referred to as the gang capital of the world. So if you can show uh, hope and healing in that community, uh, our belief was it could be done anywhere. Because mm -hmm. so, of all the violence there. Yeah, so I'm a Houstonian, I've lived here 17 years, but at the invitation of the LAPD chief, I moved to LA last year, and we have trained about 75 gang members and uh, LAPD police officers and community members all in the same room, a boot camp in nonviolence and peace, using meditation and yoga techniques. And it's changed everybody's life, including my life. Like, I'm sure it did, just seeing how it just changed and hearing everyone's stories. And you said, again, you can see that documentary is available on Amazon Prime. So if anyone is interested in seeing that, it's a great place to look. All right, well, Christine, back to you. All right, Tanaya, thank you. And we start our entertainment news on a somber note this morning. Fans of Science Channel star Mike Hughes mourning his death today. The daredevil died in a homemade rocket crash over the weekend while trying to prove that the Earth is flat. The rocket apparently hit a steel ladder on the launch ramp and ripped off a parachute can, which opened and got caught in the thrust of the rocket. Harrison Ford has the key to a successful marriage. Men just need to be quiet. 
Those are his words. Don't talk, nod your head is the advice the 77-year-old actor says jokingly in an interview with Parade Magazine. Ford has been married to actress Calista Flockhart for nearly 10 years, but they've been together for nearly twice that long. Although there is a 22-year age gap between the couple, Flockhart says that is a non-issue. And Justin Bieber has done it again. The pop star is back on top of the charts, earning his seventh number one album on Billboard. His album Changes was just released on Valentine's Day. It is Bieber's first album in more than four years. At 25, he, he is now the youngest solo artist to land seven number one albums, beating out Elvis Presley, who had seven by the time he was 26 years old. Oh, I see that you were there. That was Bieber belting out an emotional ballad over the weekend at Kanye West's Sunday service. He did his rendition of Marvin Sapp's Never Would Have Made It. Kanye's Sunday service has also attracted other A-listers, including Katy Perry, Bradley Cooper, and Brad Pitt. If you remember, Kanye brought his Sunday service to Lakewood Church back in November. That he did. Well, The Voice returns for a new season tonight, and there's a new coach joining the ranks. It's Nick Jonas. He is now getting one of those big red chairs. Mark Barger has a preview. Nick Jonas is no stranger to the voice stage. He's even served as a mentor in the past. But now the heartthrob has a chair as one of the coaches. On day one, there's there's some natural sort of nerves and just trying to figure out where do I fit into this dynamic. Are you friends now? Of course we're friends. And at the start, it was all smiles and hugs. Never going for a hug. But then... Bet on somebody that's already won. <laughs> so it's begun. The competition for artists started. After the, the second day, my manager was like, it's different today. They, <laughs> they're like mean. If you don't choose me as your coach, this puppy's going to go straight back to the animal shelter. <laughs> What is wrong with you? I love Nick Jonas as far as like threatened or even thinking of him as a coach. Is, that's not something to be taken seriously yet. The veteran coaches pulled out the stops to woo artists, but the rookie caught on quickly. You can have my jacket. I did uh, creatively use my block at one point, Ooh. which was which was so satisfying. Yes, um, it does feel good. It does feel good yes. when you do it at the right moment. Yet what starts as a single moment during the blind audition Baby, has the chance to become a life-changing journey. All you need is the best one. You need the one that can win the voice. She's my pride the search for that one is about to begin. Mark Barger, NBC News. The Voice returns tonight at 7, followed by a special preview of the new Little Big Shots, now hosted by Melissa McCarthy. That starts at 9, but of course, be sure to watch KPRC Channel 2 News at 10. I always look forward to, to a good lineup in the evening, especially when you start the week and it's mm -hmm. rainy and you're like, you know what, it's got to get through the day. Right. We're all in this together. And then you can have a nice, relaxing evening. Yeah. Uh, the good news is we're taking the rain out. There we, we go. We still are tracking rain in our coastal counties. I know you guys are having a little bit of a rough go, but you're almost through it, and then we are dry for the rest of the day. Believe it or not we just got an update from the National Weather Service on drought and we are still in drought for Southeast Texas so I know it gets in the way makes the morning commute not so much fun but we actually did need the rainfall so let's take you outside and show you where it's still raining on the island this is a live look into Galveston very gloomy out there with some rain showers coming down meanwhile this is what it looks like on exact track radar it is just now pushing onto the island so I know it seems a little dreary but unfortunately it's gonna get worse with those steady showers moving on through and of course you hear those rumbles of thunder it's gonna take at least an hour for it to work through and then it's completely gone so just hold in there and then enjoy the rest of your afternoon because we're going to be dry look off to the northwest nothing coming our way this is actually a cold front unfortunately it's not bringing any sort of cold air or fortunately depending on how you look at it the good news is whether you like the spring temperatures or the winter temperatures we have both in the next few days. We're still riding that roller coaster ride. Let's take a live look from our tower camera. It's not looking bad. Southwest Freeway, you might see a few damp spots from this morning, but we've dried out. We're at 70 degrees here in Houston, upper 60s in Galveston, 70 degrees in Sugarland. We'll top off in the mid to upper 70s for today. You might get close to about 78 degrees in the afternoon, depending on if you see that break of sun or if you do not, because we're going to be battling the clouds today. There's a look at that cold front moving through. We have a second front behind it, and that is going to bring in that 
that blast of winter air, it's arriving tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're kind of in the in-between. I'll take you hour by hour. This is a look at this afternoon, picking up the kids after school, dry temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, a warm Monday afternoon. Then tomorrow, that second cold front rolls through. 7 a.m., it's moving through our northwest counties. It continues to move through, but that strong push of north air doesn't move in until Tuesday night. So Tuesday afternoon, it's still really mild with temperatures in the 70s. It's not until Tuesday night that the cold air arrives, and then early Wednesday morning, winter has arrived. We're waking up in the 40s, and we're struggling to get to the low 50s Wednesday afternoon. The good news is we have beautiful sunshine. It is just going to be cold, and that cold air is sticking around for the end of the work week. So 54 degrees on Wednesday. Look at this. Waking up with a light freeze even here in town for Houston. So if you did early planting, decided to be bold and put tomatoes out there, you might want to bring them in if they're in a pot at least because it is going to be a cold night Wednesday and a cold night on Thursday. Those Wednesdays and Thursday nights are going to be the nights that we have temperatures in the 30s. It's kind of like rodeo season. That's the way it's yeah. to kick it off, right? You know what? It, it always is cold and typically this is our last blast of cold air. Okay. You can still have it throughout March, but usually once we get through rodeo, we start to have our warm up. Sure. All right, Britta, thank you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. A study from the National Institutes of Health points out a big problem that women have with alcohol. Health reporter Haley Hernandez reveals when whining too much is not funny. Girls night, brunch, happy hour, more women are sipping on the mommy juice just because it's Monday or bedtime or anytime and it's killing a surprising demographic. <laughs> it's amazing how women at the end of the day just to relax. They reach out for a bottle of wine. Cypress doctor Carmenia Davidson says here at Kelsey Siebold and the hospitals where she works, she's treating patients who justify their alcohol dependency because it's socially acceptable. While they're cooking, they can easily just drink alcohol or wine and think that they're just cooking. But, but by the end of the cooking session, they've already consumed more than half a bottle of wine. We see it. And according to one study, more women are dying from it at twice the rate as before. There was a larger increase in uh, alcohol-related um, illnesses or disease in white women in the last 17 years. We're not just talking about binge drinking. She says women who drink more than five ounces of wine or 12 ounces of beer a day, every day, are considered heavy drinkers. And they're dying because she says many women may not notice the symptoms of liver disease early enough to reverse the symptoms. Jaundice is very common, okay? Yellowing of the skin, of the eyes. So we to see that. So it's amazing how a little bit of shrugging off in the beginning and say, oh, it's just one drink or two. But later on, if you stretch that out over a few years, that can lead to liver cirrhosis and cancer. Doctors struggle getting female patients to cut down because at home they say they're often connecting with partners this way. And most people have no idea the correct portion for one drink, which is five ounces of wine or 12 ounces of beer. So if you're gauging a serving size by the glass that you're pouring it in, chances are you're drinking too much. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez, KPRC Channel 2 News.